It is the kickoff of the Bellator Light Heavyweight Tournament. Ryan Bader versus Lyoto Machida. Uh, also, this car, we got Liz Carmouche taking on Vanessa Porto. You got to imagine uh, Liz Carmouche. Uh, this is probably a number one contender fight there at 125 pounds. Uh, Adam Porex versus Jeremy Kenny. Kat Singano taking on uh, Olivia Parker. Uh, Coach Yamushi is taking on uh, Dan Moret. Uh, some notable fights on the preliminary card that I'll mention. Uh, matchup Dalton Ross to Tony Johnson. That one's got my eyes. Uh, Cody Law. Remember that name. Cody Law is a guy to pay attention to. Also, uh, interesting matchup between Cass Bell and Jornel Lugo there at Bantamweight. And uh, I mentioned uh, Nainoa Dung. I actually had him on the podcast on Sunday. You can check that out. The most interesting part about the conversation I had with Nino, and, and, I, and I've interviewed him now a couple of times, is he essentially, I took it to what he said is, I signed with Bellator very early on my career, and it almost kind of kind of sound like that maybe he he understands maybe that was a mistake, uh, you know that he's had a, you know he's only twenty two years old and he's growing up in Bellator, um, you know and so he's someone I'm definitely paying attention to and, and you could definitely tell his mindset is definitely different, uh, you know heading into this one but you know we talked about it earlier about you know the featherweight tournament of Pitbull and AJ McKee was the ideal tournament final. And then I was thinking about the Bellator light heavyweight tournament final, which I was thinking when I look at this tournament, I'm sitting there going, okay, what is the ideal final when we're talking about this? And so I pulled up the bracket, Daniel. And so on one side of the bracket, you have got Vanim Nemkov, who's taken on Phil Davis. Uh, That's on April the 16th. And then you've got uh, Anthony Johnson taking on Rio Romero. Then on the other side of the bracket, you've got Ryan Bader taking on Machida. And then uh, Corey Anderson taking on the fighter that I'm not even going to attempt to butcher his name. And so I'm sitting there thinking, like, if you're Bellator, what's the ideal final? I think it's Vadim Nimkov versus Corey Anderson. Why do you think it's that fight? So when Corey Anderson left the UFC, he was what? Top three, top four? His loss is to, his most recent loss will be to Jan Blachowicz, the, the UFC light heavyweight champion. And I think it's got to be about profiling your current champion. I mean, look, the, the fight everyone wants to see is Rumble and and Romero. I'm, I'm kind of surprised that they didn't try to put Nimkov on the other side of the bracket and potentially have the Rumble Romero winner eventually fight him in the final saying they obviously they both get there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think the, the, the theoretical final would have been Nemkov versus like Rumble or Nemkov versus Romero. I get why you're putting Anderson in that final slot. I mean, he's just younger than everyone else in the bracket. I think if you're looking for which final will get the biggest rating, not long-term, what if we get the dragon in the final? All right, the dragon comes out, and he—I know it's not going to happen. My man is my man is almost, you know, like he's like forty-two years old. But let's say Leoto takes a swig of that at that piss, and he knocks out Bader, and then he knocks out Corey Anderson, and our man, the dragon, is in the final, and he's taking on like Anthony uh, Johnson, and, and we have Anthony Johnson and the dragon. I think that's a ratings bonanza, Jason. If we can tell the story of Leoto, because the thing is, Leoto Machida to me is the most interesting person on his side of the bracket. Even though he's definitely going to lose to Bader, it's just like when I think of Corey and when I think of Bader, all I can think of is just takedowns. And I know Bader has the knockout ability, but still. Yeah. So, uh, by the way, uh, kudos for landing the Oda Machia's age of 42. He turns 43 <laughs> on May the 30th. So I expect Bayer to win. Think about this. Okay. The last time the Oda Machia won a fight was June 14th of 2019. If we want to go back to the start of 2014, the Oda Machida has won four or five. He's, he's won six fights. The wins against Gegard Mousasi, which by by far is the best win in this stretch, C.B. Dalloway, Eric Anders, Vitor Belfort, Rafael Carvalho, and Shell Sonnen. Who is the bet? Who who's the number two win in that stretch? Oh man, I think it's uh, I think it's uh, I think it's Eric Anders. I think I'm trying to. 
Yeah, I mean, it's either that or... I mean, just think about the Ch- version Ch- they fought yeah, at that yeah. point. Yeah, I mean... C.B. Dalloway, maybe. Um, obviously, you know, you, you go back two years before that and you beat Ryan Bader, but... You know, things have changed dramatically ever since Leoto first won that title, you know, and and again, I just it's more of one of those things when I'm looking at who is the most like like if we said this guy is going to go on a magical run, who would get the most audience? And I would still t- think, tell you Leoto would get a bigger audience than Bader, Corey or I can't do it, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I look, I feel bad for yeah. Michael C. Williams because yeah. I, I just I, that's why I just want to do an interview with Michael C. Williams. Go. All right, Mike, how many times have you practiced this name? Oh, yeah. And you'll nail it. And then we're going to take some notes and, and we'll I'll try my best. Um, but Corey's like the guy who's like the long term guy on that side of the bracket. And then Vadim's the long term guy on the right side of the bracket. And it's just that and Johnson or Romero is the more known guy to the casual so it's kind of that thing when you're when you're picking the ideal final it's what are you going for are you going for a final that gets the best possible rating or a final that's best for you long term that these two guys get attention and these are your champions so i i think nim cub anderson's probably the correct answer but if i was to lock in if i'm bellator which fight would i most want in the final i would probably go with Corey anderson versus Anthony Johnson. I want Anthony Johnson to come out of nowhere and like be one of the best fighters on the planet. Probably won't happen, but you know, he left the sport at a point where he was still a top 10 fighter. Yeah. I mean, I, the, my question with rumble Johnson is just four years away from the sport. What's he going to look like that? That to me is, is the biggest question. So by the way, so I looked this up. So Michita and Bader, they fought back on August the 4th, 2012, UFC on Fox number four. The TV prelims were on Fuel TV, by the way, back in those days. <laughs> Your crazy. main event was Shogun Hua versus Brandon Vera. And uh, Shogun won via leg kicks, right? Uh, yeah, in the, fourth, in the yeah. fourth round. Also in that card, you had Joe Lazone defeated uh, Jamie Varner. Mike Swick to meet, defeated Demarcus Johnson. Dang, Jamie Varner really fell after that loss. And by and the way, then, Phil Davis was on that card where that was a no contest with the eye poke against Wagner Prado. I could have sworn Phil Davis was like the main event of UFC on Fox too, but I'm probably thinking of a different of a different fight card. I, I want to say was that like a January card that he headlined? I want to say. Let me see which one did he headline. Uh uh, did you do? Oh, he headlined UFC on Fox too against Rashard Evans. Oh, he did. So, th- my man fought. Oh, because these things were more spaced out. <laughs> Let's see. Because USA and Fox 2 is January. And then. Oh, I'm bad. I'm not operating Wikipedia well at all. And then UFC on Fox was in August. This was the fourth one. So, the UFC on Fox 4 was in August. The second one was in January. This, this, my- <laughs> this is the crazy thing about Phil Davis. He's approaching his six-year anniversary in Bellator. That is crazy. Time time has passed tremendously fast. He made his uh, Bellator debut in 2015. <laughs> That's amazing. That's it. Makes that it makes you feel old, doesn't it? I yeah. mean, he's probably spent more time in Bellator than he has in the UFC at this point. Uh, yeah, because I mean, yeah. So okay, Nemkov is my pick to win the tournament. Mm-hmm. Now you you uh, hit you hit the heavyweight tournament last time with Bader. I think yeah. I I think I picked Matt Mitrione. That didn't work out too well for me. That was a bad pick for sure. Um, <laughs> crap, this is a tough one because I think Nenkos absolutely the best fighter on this tournament, but I don't yeah. want to pick the same guy as you. Oh, okay. yeah, look, look, if I was going to go with another pick, I would go Corey Anderson. But what does concern me? Is him taking on strikers that can stop a takedown, aka Ryan Bader? Screw it, I'm gonna go with Ryan Bader to win the light heavyweight tournament. Screw it, I'm, I'm gonna go with Ryan Bader. Look, at the end of the day, I don't know how I can watch Nen Cuff versus Bader the first time and think Bader's gonna beat him, right? <laughs> like I, I can't, I can't in good faith, but. My logic here is Bader has the easiest, has like a way easier path to the final than like either Nenkoff or the winner of Johnson or Romero. Like the fact that they have to face each other in the semifinals 
and, and I think yeah, I'm gonna go with Bader, but it's it's a tough one. I don't feel good about it. I mean, Johnson or Romero could absolutely win this tournament too. Yeah, but by, by the way, uh, speaking of this car, so Adam Borix is on this car, and I couldn't believe this. I'm look, I'm a voting member of uh, of the Bellator rankings. I could not believe that Adam Borex is ranked number three overall in the Bellator fighter rankings. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we talked about that, and it's crazy. And, and did he move up? Basically? No, he is not. He has not moved up. So I, I've got the email in front of me. So looking at the fighters that moved up this week, uh, Tyrell Fortune moved up two spots to number four at heavyweight. Uh. Amosoft moved up one spot to the number one spot at welterweight. Jason Jackson moved up three spots. He's now at number three. Uh, Magomed Magomedov moved up one spot at Bantamweight. He is number four. Uh, and uh, Watanabe, she moved up one spot. Uh, but I, I was looking at Adam Borex. Uh, and when you look at his best wins in Bellator... Obviously, you go back to uh, you know his wins earlier on when he got the win against Pat Curran and Aaron Pico. But if you look at his other wins in Bellator, Eric Sanchez, Mike Hamill, Joselindo Silva, and Theodore Nikolaev, and Anthony Taylor. Yeah, doesn't scream number. I, I you know I just I because I remember when you know I, I put I did my rankings like last Sunday. And then when I saw, I got the email, I was like, Borex number three still? And I'm like, he doesn't have a top five win. Mm-hmm. Like, how do, you put, how do you put him over a guy like Pedro Carvalho? How do you put him over a guy like Daniel Veitchel? It's a tough one. It's a tough one. And I don't get it either. And I don't agree with it. You know, it's an opportunity to justify that ranking against Jeremy Kennedy. I mean, that's a great fight. And, and he may return to form. But I mean, his most re- recent performance is a fight he very well could have lost when he took on Mike Hamill if he had different judges. That was a close mm-hmm, fight yeah. that could have gone either way. And again, Mike Hamill is gaining credibility every time he fights. So maybe Hamill is just a tough dog to fight against. But yeah, the idea of Adam being number three is just like I don't know if he had enough wins before his initial loss in Bellator to justify being number three, when you again contrast him with someone who's more of a steadier dog like Daniel Weigel, who's beaten more consistently good Bellator featherweights. For Adam Morax, a win over Jeremy Kennedy would be one of those wins. And and, and again, I think he's going to get that win, but it's been a, a good while since we've seen, and again, a big part of the reason why it's been a good while is because of the pandemic, but it's been a good while since we've seen Adam Borax perform at that top-level prospect that he displayed because, you know, uh, uh, on the way to the tournament, Adam looked like a guy who would be a championship contender, and he may just be that, but I feel like we're rewarding him before he's truly proven it against some of those top 10 of Bellator featherweights. And again, that's why his matchup on the main card to me is probably the second most interesting fight on, on that card. You know, I mean, look, uh, Kat Zingano, we now know Chris Cyborg is going to ha- uh, defend her title against Leslie Smith. Uh, of course, they fought each other in the UFC. That's going to be, I want to say it's May 21st. Uh, you know, this is definitely a showcase fight for Kat Zingano. I will say this, though. There have been fighters who have come in from Valor Fighting Challenge as the quote-unquote B-side of the fight that have spoiled uh, the A-side of the fight's plan. The one that really sticks out to me is Corey Browning. They brought him in twice. Uh, One time against Baby Slice and another time against Aaron Chalmers over in Europe. And Corey Browning won both of those fights. But that should be a Kat Zingano showcase fight. You'd have to imagine a notable win by Kat here. You'd have to think puts her to get the winner of Chris Cyborg, Leslie Smith. I, or I should just say gets Chris Cyborg. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Although I tell you what, uh, that was interesting that they flew both of them out. There. I don't know if they had to fly them out there, but they, oh, they yeah. well, they're flew. both Cal- They're both from California. Okay. Yeah. 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 So they just flew them out there just to have like a little stare down. <laughs> that was funny, but Hey man, I guess the, the Bellator budget is balling, but um, yeah, I mean, that was nice. The thing is, it's cool because when you watch that, and if you're a casual fan, you watch the broadcast, you see that, and you think, wow, that's a big fight, um, and I'm excited to see it. And, and so, yeah, that's good, and, and I think, yeah, I think Cyborg, you know, cash those paychecks. I think Cyborg probably has five title defenses in her in terms of just dominating her opponents. I think she'll probably call it a career because this is someone 
who's been a part of our lives since those strike force days, right? Like when Morrow was calling the very first main card fight, Watsonabe and uh, uh, Laura, he was talking about how on the very first strike force showtime fight, Gina Carano and Julie Kedzie were, you know, and it was an amazing barn burner. And yeah. during that time period is the era in which Cyborg dominated and she's still dominating. Like, that seems like so long ago. We're talking about UFC on Fox 2. We're talking about all this stuff. During that period is when Cyborg was the best female fighter of all time. And so it's thir- like at some point Cyborg is going to lose. But it helps that she's taking on people who are also a part of that same generation, too. Like Leslie yeah. Smith and Sangano are a part of that generation. Um, but, yeah, I just – yeah, I, I think it's it's her division. But, yeah, Zingano's going to run through. I mean, the porto Carmouche fight is much more interesting. I mean, Porto's <laughs> yeah. legit – a legit flyweight that could absolutely pull off the win. I'm not picking her, but I mean the, the jiu-jitsu's there, the stand-ups there. Not the most entertaining fighter as is Carmouche. I'm not gonna like run to the TV screen to watch it, but that's still like a compelling co-main event. And interesting that Bellator was able to get ho- get her instead of her signing with the UFC. Uh, you know, on Thursday, uh, the weigh-ins will be interesting with Gochi Yamauchi after he missed weight last time. Fight did not happen. I do know that uh, you know he had to go through the entire process to show that it is healthy for him to make 155 pounds. That one uh, does interest me there as well.